What is up everyone, I have some pretty big news for you today, and some of you are going to be quite happy about this, and some of you are going to be split or disappointed about this. Either way, it's quite interesting, so let's jump straight into the news. So, as we have learned throughout the past few months, internet electronics shops like leaking things before they're supposed to be released, and yesterday, while we were live streaming, was no different. Yesterday, while we were doing our live stream, the new HTC Vive headsets got leaked, and they come as a disappointment to many. I've been reading through the Twitter comments, I've been reading through the Upload VR, the Road to VR comments, and to many people, it seems that HTC Vive is now dead. And you may be asking yourself, why is that? Why would HTC Vive be dead to everyone? Are they not releasing the big standalone headset that we were all hoping for? Well, I don't know what to tell you, because even though these things are pretty much confirmed, and I can confirm that because the shop is still up and the cached site is still up, so we have the name and we have the price, we don't actually know anything about these headsets, except for, again, the name, the price, and the release date. So let me tell you what we got here. We got the HTC Vive Focus 3, a business-oriented headset coming in at 1,474 euro, or 1,771 dollars. And we've got the Vive Pro 2, coming in at 842 euro. So our price speculations were roughly correct, at least for one of them, because we said eight, 600 to 800 euro. So it's a little bit above that, but it is there. Here's where things get interesting. That Vive Focus 3 is a business-oriented headset, and that is supposedly their standalone variant. And while we have no specs, and while we have no confirmations, again, this is all just leaks, even though it is, again, pretty much confirmed, because the site is still up, and it is there. We have no clue what to think about the Vive Pro 2. Because on the Discord yesterday, at night, we were having another podcast, and it was very late, so I don't actually remember what happened during that podcast. But all I know is that I had, like, a massive mental thinking session where I was thinking out loud and I was saying to people, if that Vive Pro 2 is not a standalone headset, which many of you think it's not because it is part of the Vive Pro line, meaning it's a PC VR headset supposedly with wires, is there even room for it in our current VR market? What is it going to compete with? Because at that price point, 842 euro, it's not cheap. It's more of a prosumer headset. So what it's competing with here is the index. What kind of specs would it need to have in order to compete with the index? And is there even any point with competing with the index? The index is a great headset and the people that buy it are normally quite happy with it until something breaks. What people are saying here is HTC Vive is pretty much dead to them because of that Vive Pro 2. We all expected some form of an enterprise-grade headset, so that one is kind of out of the line. And I was asking you guys yesterday, do I even buy the Vive Pro 2? Because obviously they're not gonna send it to me for review. I don't think HTC Vive even sends things for review. I mean, if they wanted to, yeah, I'm all in, but like, I don't think they're going to. So the real question here is, are you guys even interested in a Vive Pro 2 headset if the specs are comparable to an index and it's not standalone? That was my huge, huge, Question, do we go out and spend 842 euro on a headset that is not really competing with anything? But on the other hand, the Vive Pro 2 could be a standalone headset. And this is where things get interesting because many of you on the Discord came out and said, we need more mid-range VR standalone headsets. We've got the Oculus Quest 2, which is a fantastic headset at an even better price. This thing's specs are very, very impressive, especially at the price they're selling it at. And then we've got the Index, the G2, and the Pimax. They're not standalone, of course, but they are the higher-end headsets. And we have nothing really in the middle yet. And even though the price of this standalone headset is very, very comparable with the Index, or maybe even not competitive at all, if it is a standalone headset, things are going to start getting interesting because I will get it if it's a standalone headset. If the Vive Pro 2 is a standalone headset, I am going to get it, no doubt, to review it for you guys, to check it out myself, and see the specs. Now, if the specs are worse than the Quest 2, that's where things start getting a little bit interesting. Oh yeah, and from the article on Protocol, which were like the first people to come out with this, we also know that these headsets are going to be released at ViveCon and are going to start selling by the end of this month. So, there you go, we have a release date as well. I don't know, for some reason I have doubts in my head as to whether the Vive Pro 2 is going to be a standalone headset. It is part of the Vive Pro lineup, so unless they changed something drastically, it doesn't seem it's going to be a standalone. And 
people are going to be very, very disappointed. But things don't add up for me here, and I spent a lot of time thinking about this, and the people on the podcast know that I, I was just thinking pretty much all night at it. We were told on the Next Dimension podcast that, and I keep going back to this, that the headset was going to be like the Index of standalones, but price-wise it was going to be more like the Index than the G2, but not quite, which would make sense. That 842 euro price tag is more like the Index and less like the G2. However, that other headset, the Vive Focus 3, is just out of the price range, like, completely. So what I'm thinking here is, I think that is our saving grace that this might be a standalone, but we also need to remember that these are just leaks and there might actually be even more headsets coming. Who knows, there might be a full-blown consumer standalone. I mean, come on, they've been joining Discord servers, so it kind of seems like they might be hiding something for us consumers. I don't know, there's not much point on dwelling on this any further because ViveCon is quite literally coming up in a few days. So we are still live streaming it, I'm still pretty hyped up for it. Let me know what you guys think about this one down below. I know people are going to be quite split about this. What do you think about it? If it's a standalone headset, what do you think about the price points? But yeah, I would love to hear your opinions down below. Let's move on to the next piece of news. So here's another one. I'm going to read you the title from Upload VR, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit. Fortnite developer Epic Games offered to make a new game for the launch of Sony's PS5 VR headset in a bid to enable crossplay, according to a recent report. So I don't know about you guys, but when I got my CV1 first, Epic Games did have an exclusive on that as well. It was a launch title. It was called Robo Recall. And I don't know about you guys, but I think Robo Recall is a absolute gem. The graphics in it, I personally think are damn beautiful. And the gameplay is even better. I love the gun mechanics in it. And I absolutely love destroying those robots to bits. And I still go back to the game even now because you can play it with Steam VR headsets using Revive or whatever that software that allows you to play Oculus games on Steam VR headset is called. It's a very, very good game. So if Epic Games was to come out and release an exclusive for the PlayStation 5 VR headset, I expect no less than that from them. And once again, I loved that thing. And I'm sure I'm going to have some people in the comments section agreeing with me on this one. But it would totally push me to buy the PlayStation VR headset even more than it is kind of already pushing me to buy because of those controllers and how interesting they look. But it's very interesting to see that Epic Games is getting in on this and something might come of it. I know also from the comments section on the last Epic Games video that people apparently dislike Epic Games quite a bit. So there's going to be some pretty split opinions on this one as well, I believe. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. Talking about PlayStation, we also have a PlayStation and Discord partnership. It's about time because that took them a while. I believe Xbox has had Discord integration for quite a little bit now, and we've had it on PC for as long as I can remember. So it's about time PlayStation get in on that bandwagon, and I cannot wait to see more companies getting in on that because I know so many people that would love Discord on the Oculus Quest 2. Officially, of course, because I know we can sideload it, and I know it's going to turn on, but it's, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, and there's some bugs and glitches and things that... Blah, blah, blah. But if it was official, I know a lot of people would would use it myself included. And Discord is one of the most used apps, especially by our community. I use it pretty much every day. It's like my most used app, actually. So I really need this thing on standalone headsets. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe if enough people want it, it'll happen. And the question is, how long until it happens? I think this one, again, is more of a question of how long rather than will it happen? Unless Facebook is against it for whatever reason. But yeah, that one is quite interesting there. The more platforms Discord is on, the better. Oh yeah, and here is one that I was talking about on the podcast channel yesterday that I don't think many of you saw coming. And I certainly didn't because as I said in the podcast yesterday, this is something that I never thought would happen. VR is getting advertised on billboards. And I think the last VR headset that was advertised on billboards was the Gear VR. So I never thought I would live up to the day where there is another headset being advertised on billboards. But that, it, it goes further. It really does because the Oculus Quest 2, is now being advertised on billboards by Facebook, but it's not being advertised as just a VR headset, a gamer headset. It's being advertised as a fitness device. And as much as you can hate Facebook, all you want, seriously, you cannot deny the fact that what they're doing for virtual reality is amazing, and especially at the price point they're doing it at. Because of that price point, many people that have not tried VR ever are going to now try VR because of that price point. They're going to hop on and hopefully they're gonna love it. And now with Facebook sending out these billboards spreading even more awareness and not only that, but spreading awareness that VR can actually be used for something that isn't just gaming, because many people have the perception in their mind that VR is just for gamers. VR isn't just for gamers. It can be used for productivity, fitness, gaming, 
uh, entertainment. I don't know, like, you know, virtual cinema kind of entertainment. VR can be used for a lot more. And now with these huge billboards everywhere and these advertisements, that is being spread even further. And I think that's really, really cool. And here is one where I was just kind of memeing it last night. I was like, hey, it seems somebody stole our idea because we were memeing it all over the Discord. Actually, we've been memeing it for the past week that when I do get my car this year, hopefully, because I am planning on doing my driver's license and getting a car, we're gonna make a service where we do virtual reality carpooling. Basically, I'm gonna stick a few 360 cameras up in the car and live stream the event. And you guys can connect to those 360 cameras and we can do virtual reality carpooling together. But it seems that somebody has decided to take our idea. Polaride, the Audi or Audi co-founder startup aiming to inject immersive VR and AR into everyday car travel announced it's raised a 10 million euro or roughly 12 million dollars series a investment round the company first unveiled its tech back at ces 2019 showing off its platform which integrates a car's movement with vr content the idea is a backseat passenger can use a vr headset whilst playing videos and games that are synced up with the vehicle's movement something that aims to not only be fun but also a comfortable experience since all the movement you're feeling in game is also happening in the physical world hopefully mitigating motion sickness hopefully you know, that sounds pretty damn fun. And it sounds like an interesting idea right there. That is something that you guys will not get for free using my service, which is going to be called uh, the virtual reality carpooling because I cannot afford to send you all like your twos or something like that. So you guys are going to need to like emulate that movement yourself. If uh, also my driving will not be this erratic, hopefully, but with Irish roads, you never know. There you guys go. That is going to be our news session for today. I know I went on a little bit of a ramble there about that HTC headset, but hopefully I got as much out to you guys as possible. It's nice to speculate before the actual event, especially when we get some leaks, because then we can go back and be like, yeah, we were right about this or yeah, we were completely off about that. You know, it's quite interesting. But thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a fantastic day or night, wherever you are. And if you guys are not yet part of our community, make sure to join that Discord down below. Make sure to join our Reddit, post your spicy memes on there. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way you should perform, we've got sick merch down below that doesn't put a huge out on body and mugs that boost your FPS by 300%. And if you guys want to be notified about your content coming up on the channel, make sure to subscribe button. We're here for how I my balance. See you in the next video. Peace.